you should be including it asserts into your development workflow and here's why let's say you had a task and that was to build a sandwich maker so let's go ahead and define the class and we'll call it sandwich maker in our constructor, we need to define an ingredients quark parameter. Because it's such a loosely specified parameter with no restrictions really, it will cause issues down the road. But let's go ahead and finish up by declaring two more class variables. One, it's going to be sandwich, which is going to be a dictionary. The second one's going to be ingredients, which is going to be a dictionary storing the ingredients parameter. Now, a sandwich maker needs to be able to make a sandwich. So let's go ahead and make a method call to make sandwich. In that method, we're going to specify the return type as none. I always make it a note to never forget your return types for methods or functions. Okay, we need a way to update the sandwich value. I find the best approach for this example would be to use a dot update along with a dot get. So in our update, we'll explicitly type out bread as the key and we'll use the dot get on the argument passed to our ingredients parameter. By using dot get, that allows you to specify the return type if it's not found. So that helps when you're debugging. But for our example, we're not going to specify that type. As a side note, it's good practice whenever you have to type something more than once, that's an indicator to store it in a variable or store it in an enumeration. Writing code that way will protect you from yourself in the future. But we're not going to do that in this example. All right. We'll finish up the ingredients with sauce, meat, and cheese so that we can actually see what's going on. Let's go ahead and title two prints. Now for the second print, we do need to display the key and the value. You can use dot items to get the key and the value in a for loop. It's better than using enumerate or trying to loop through the length of the dictionary and then trying to get the key and the value. Personally, I would recommend using a list comprehension, but I'm not going to do that for this video. Finally, we need to instantiate our sandwich, and I think that I want an agave ham sandwich. If we go ahead and run the code, you'll see that right now all of the values are none. Now let's go ahead and create the problem problem for our example. Let's say that we want it to toast our bread extra crispy. So let's make a method for that. We'll go ahead and print out a separator and then we'll make a call to that method. In our bread toasting method, a toaster cannot toast bread if the bread isn't actually there. So let's check to make sure that the sandwich does hold a value for bread. In this example, imagine that you have a thousand plus lines of code. So we'll print out that somewhere in a thousand plus lines of code, the sandwich doesn't have bread. But if it does have bread, we can go ahead and tell the program it's ready to keep going. Now, if we output this, it tells us that there's an error somewhere in a thousand plus lines of code. That's bad because we don't know where this is at. But first, I want to go ahead and add agave as our sauce. Then we can correct this code by adding an assert. Think of assert as a stoppage in your code if a value does not equate to what you need it to be. In our example, we're going to check for bread. If there is no bread, we'll print out that, whoops, you forgot your bread. If we output this, we get an assertion error that says, whoops, you forgot your bread. Assertion should only be used in development code only. Why? Because it does take up resources. However, it is useful when you're writing lazy code like this example. Now we can just fix that by adding a bread type of wheat to our initialization and then calling it again. And now we have our bread, which is wheat, our sauce that's agave, and everything else is none. But we do also have the final part, bread toast looking extra crispy, to tell us that, hey, you can keep running the program. So to summarize, asserts are good for when you have a lot of code, you have a part in your program that requires something to run, and it does not tell you if you don't have that value. If you like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more daily content. And as well, if you noticed any issues, you have any information or another way that you would have solved this, definitely leave that in the comment section below. I am still learning. I'm no expert. I'm intermediate at best. The whole purpose of the channel is for us to learn and grow as a community.